Bahamas employs over 500 people. Of the 500, how many of them do you think are Bahamian? About three quarters. Okay. I will say 80%. I would say all. All? <laughs> I would say about 98%. 98%. Yes. I was going about 80%, 80. so but 98 sounds better. <laughs> <laughs> I say 80%. I think about 95% of them are behaving. Okay. Yes. <laughs> what if I told you 99%? 99% of the people in Bahamian? 99%. Bahamia? That's true? Oh, excellent. Yeah? So, Cable Bahamas is entirely for the Bahamian people. That is correct. Cable Bahamas is widely represented by Bahamians. Well, now you know. Thousands of BEC customers left powerless again. A fuel leak in Sandy Port confirmed. The former Anglican Archbishop warns more people could be pressured into supporting gay marriage. Plus, a tribute to whom many consider the father of the nation. We've got those stories and more tonight. I'm Kyle Joaquin and NB12 starts right now. Thousands of BC customers throughout New Providence endured an hours-long blackout in 93-degree temperature this morning after a system disturbance resulted in a complete shutdown at the Bahamas Electricity Corporation's Blue Hills Power Station. As Vonnie 2 tells us, BC officials are blaming the blackout on bad weather. Lightning struck a transmission line around 7.45 this morning, causing a complete shutdown of generator units at BEC's Blue Hills Power Station and leaving 60% of customers in New Providence without power. Executive Chairman of the Bahamas Electricity Corporation, Leslie Miller, says as soon as the engine shut down, BEC crews immediately assessed the situation and began working to return the engines to service. When that lightning storm took place earlier this morning, um, some of the overhead lines running from Clifton to Blue Hills um, got damaged and also some of the transformers got damaged. So I believe they're still working on those transformers trying to get us back. It almost looked like a almost partially island-wide blackout. Hopefully before the end of the day we'll have things back on track. Just one of those things that happen from time to time. BEC officials said in a statement the first impacted unit was returned to service and power supply was restored to some customers by 9 a.m. Meantime, more than 95 percent of impacted customers had their supply restored by 11 a.m. Miller says residents of western and eastern New Providence were among those affected, and officials hope to have all of their lights back on by the end of the day. Most of ODs um, was off. The inner city, all of um, um, Prince Charles Drive was off. Um, parts of the western portion, it, 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 it affected just about every other area in New Providence. And hopefully they would rectify that um, during the course of the day. Miller, whose time as BEC chairman will come to an end when government announces new board appointments, expressed hope that the corporation would take steps to prevent such system disturbances from happening during the hurricane season. Hopefully um, with the hurricane season almost upon us, that they would take the necessary precautions of putting in the lightning arrestors on all of those poles so that this don't reoccur during the hurricane season. So let's hope that they would do their jobs and things would get better. Reporting for NB12, I'm Vonnie Tude. The Department of Environmental Health Services today released a preliminary report into the oil sheen seen in water near the Rubus service station in Sandy Port. Listed in the report are several possible causes, including a past fuel spill at the service station prior to Rubus's takeover, a leaking dispenser, runoff from drains, and discharges from nearby vessels. The department now recommends that the Sandy Port Development Company Limited accept some responsibility for the oily sheen seen in the area and share in the cleanup exercise. According to the statement, upon inspection, it was found that there was a leak at the dispenser closest to the, bo to the boat fueling dock. That dispenser has since been deactivated and remains inoperable. DEHS says it will continue to monitor the situation and adds that it is satisfied with the response of the station owner and Ruiz Bahamas thus far. 
Rubus' managing director, Gordon Craig, had previously told our news team that the company had immediately responded to reports of heavy fumes and leaks at the facility, but denied reports of large fuel spillages. More and more Bahamians may wind up supporting gay marriage. That's according to Archbishop Drexel Gomez, who today warned of the dangerous influence the recent gay marriage ruling in the United States could have on the Bahamas. Gomez said although he doesn't believe Bahamians as a whole support homosexuality, there is mounting pressure and he's concerned those influences are going to be the end of society. Dana Smith reports. The mere fact that we live next door to America, as soon as the decision was made in the U.S., most Bahamians knew about it through television or, or radio. So the danger for us, as far as I'm concerned, is the, the social media and t television generally, mm -hmm. that those influences are going to be there in the society. And I believe that more and more Bahamians over time may be persuaded to go in that direction. The United States gay marriage ruling grabbed headlines here in the Bahamas. As one Bahamian man told NB12 last week, he was one of the first to take advantage of the same-sex marriage legalization in all 50 states. He married his partner in Georgia. And Gomez noted it's not just the U.S. that's adopting a new position. Honestly, I have to also admit that there are strong movements in Australia, New Zealand, and parts of the United Kingdom that who are willing to support the United States Church and the church in Canada is going to do the same thing or planning to do something similar next year. Gomez said Anglican churches the world over are changing their stance on gay marriage and supporting it and he explained it's only a matter of time before the pressure falls in the Bahamas. Gomez said personally he does not support gay marriage and his position has become a point of contention among some of his international peers. And in my ministry, I mean, uh, persons have attempted to threaten me. I mean, one a bishop in New York threatened, uh, threatened to go to immigration to, to prevent me from speaking at a meeting in New York because they all knew that my position against it and in the Anglican Communion, I have been one of the leaders against the whole homosexual movement. In term, not against homosexuals, but against the homosexual lifestyle. As for whether gay marriage would ever become legal in the Bahamas, Gomez noted that would require the law to change, and he doesn't think Bahamian society is quite ready for that. If you were to poll the Bahamian community, by overwhelming numbers, they would disagree, overwhelmingly. But Gomez admitted the influences of outside forces could very well lead some Bahamians toward supporting it. Reporting for NB12, I'm Dana Smith. On the eve of the country's 42nd anniversary of independence, government officials gathered at Lyndon Pendling International Airport to pay tribute to the father of the nation during a statue unveiling ceremony. Prime Minister Perry Christie says his administration has completed the circle by erecting a statue in honor of the country's first Bahamian prime minister, whom he hailed as a hero of the revolution. However, Christie said it is unfortunate that after 42 years of independence, Bahamians still wear their party colors and do not appreciate national heroes. We still have reflected a jaundiced political view, one that contradicts history and the meaning of history. We as leaders still have not yet reached the point where we could demonstrate by our presence that there are some areas in our national life that transcends political division. Prime Minister also noted that Pinling's widow, Dame Marguerite Pinling, did not become Governor General by accident. He says the PLP government is near the manifestation of Pinling's dream and it will not be distracted by naysayers. Today we have decided to come here, and you can see by now I'm not going to read the speech. But I don't want to frighten you. But this, there's plenty of pages here. But we've come here today to honor our brother, our leader, our former prime minister, our hero of the revolution, by completing the circle of naming an airport after him and having a symbol of his identity present and placed at the airport.
Also paying tribute was Transport and Aviation Minister Glennis Hannah Martin, who said it is necessary for people to have an appreciation of the struggles and sacrifices of their forefathers. It is fundamental to a people to know and to understand the details of the story of their journey. Marcus Garvey said, a people without the knowledge of their past history, and a people without the knowledge of their past history, origin and culture is like a tree without roots. I would liken it to a people with amnesia, wandering around, not know, truly knowing what they are, and in a state of virtual confusion. Confusion of this nature is painful. Pendling's daughter, Monique Pendling Johnson, thanked the government for continuing to honor her father's memory. And two days after 19-year-old Stephen Gardner defeated the world champion in the 400 meters, Sean A. Miller did the same. In another competitive lineup, Miller practically destroyed her competition, including world champion Sanya Richards-Ross, in a time of 49.92 seconds. Straight to Eugene. Now she pulls alongside Hastings. Still really good running here from Sean A. Miller there in the purple in five. These three are pressed. Miller for the Bahamas has a slight lead, working hard with the arms, and going well clear. A little private battle between Richards Ross in the orange and Hastings, but that's a big, big winning margin. Six or eight yards to the good, and look at the time. 49.93 for Shawnee Miller of the Bahamas. That's a huge new personal best. She becomes the third athlete this year, under 50 seconds indeed. She slots in.